Now, boss battles are a cathartic part of video games. There's an incredible feeling that comes with playing them. The coup de grace that you've just spent a sizable chunk of a game working your way towards, whether it's fighting a huge brute of a humanoid, a horde of security drones, or just your average Joe, boss battles are a genuine make or break facet of gaming. And you know what? Some designers clearly love some boss battles more than others because they end up reusing them again and again and again. And that's what we're here to talk about today. As I'm Jules, this is WhatCulture.com, and these are 10 video games that reused enemies and made them worse. Number 10. Sahelanthropus, Metal Gear Solid 5: The Phantom Pain Now Big Puss over here is the main boss in The Phantom Pain, the fifth installment in the Metal Gear Solid franchise. And as the most potent boss in the title, Sahelanthropus displayed a deft presentation with bipedal limbs that previous Metal Gear models lacked, despite it actually chronologically coming before them. Hideo Kojima's out-of-order errors aside, its first appearance was largely revered as a genuinely difficult boss battle. At first, players had to weave around the fighting area evading its assorted attacks for several agonizing minutes as they worked out a plan of attack. Your best bet was to gun it down from a rigged out helicopter, as naturally this gives a better vantage point. But if you didn't realize this though, the beefed up tank provided an arduous task for most Metal Gear Solid 5 players. But by the time that it returned in the final mission, its intimidation factor was massively depleted, given that you'd already defeated it. And the manner in which you do so again is far more obvious. Just throw everything you've got at it, making the process a lot simpler. It's this version of Sahelanthropus that gives Metal Gear Solid 5 its tainted moniker of being a great video game that was unfortunately ruined by a calamitous third act. A terrible final mission in every degree. Number 9. The Bloater, The Last of Us the Last of Us's bloaters are the infected at their most dangerous, with their mutilated build acting almost as a shield and are thus routinely difficult to kill. Now, The first bloater you encounter in the gymnasium during Chapter 4 Bill's Road is a juggernaut compared to its successors, being tougher to incapacitate and can withstand plenty of shotgun shells and Molotov cocktails, providing Joel with one of the toughest challenges of the entire award-winning title. You'll notice that every bloater after this, though, has a strangely reduced health bar, in spite of the fact that the creatures are physically identical to each other. You've also got a more extensive dispensary of weaponry at your disposal. That, although not unlimited, is enough to make the intended intimidation of each subsequent bloater ineffective to your progress. Bloaters were clearly designed to be a daunting challenge on your Last of Us quest, and Naughty Dog did a fabulous job of conveying that the first time around, but there's just nothing overtly daunting about a bloater which you can kill so easily and so rapidly. It's a shame, really, as they're one of the franchise's most dynamic enemies. Number 8. Pyramid Head, Silent Hill 2. Now, there is an almost eternal list of synonyms that can be used to describe Pyramid Head from the Silent Hill series. Powerful, dominant, robust, capable, and oh my god, will you just die already? A long-standing source of acrimony, Pyramid Head's appearance in Silent Hill 2 is perhaps its most rage-inducing. Implemented as a weapon of psychological torment for protagonist James Sunderland, you're tasked with fighting the egregious enemy a number of times. At first, it's portrayed as a durable creature, as you're made to shoot it a number of times within a time limit, though it will leave you alone afterwards. This bizarre encounter leaves you on the edge of your seat in anticipation of its return, and it's made to feel like you'll eventually finish what you started here. Your second and third encounters with it in involve running down a hallway and around a maze, unable to kill it as it needs to reappear later. But as the biggest slap in the face, Pyramid Head kills itself. It renders a large portion of the game inconsequential, robbing you of what could have been a pretty iconic moment. Pyramid Head battles are usually notorious for being almost unwinnable, so formidable are these creatures, but this was notorious for entirely different reasons. Number 7. The Icon of Sin – Doom 2 now, Doom is another franchise renowned for its recycling of assets. Dating as far back as December 1993's debut, even in the most recent release, Doom Eternal, the Doom Hunter is first introduced early in the story as a boss, but after you kill it, two more come out almost immediately. It was in Doom 2, though, that the developers made their most flagrant error. The goat-like Icon of Sin serves as the final boss of the base game, having previously been able to spawn a glut of demonic monsters. Players must shoot what appears to be the severed head of John Romero impaled on a pole in order to finish this level and thus the game. But the Icon of Sin returns at the end of Map 15 of Master Levels, a Doom 2 expansion pack. Due to the diminutive size of the map's walls, this once fearsome monster is now much easier to kill given that you're now in a more convenient spot to target its weak point. It's a shame that id Software felt the need to bring the Icon of Sin back for a second go around as, in the base game, it was a genuinely decent and believable final boss who provided a wholly convincing battle that rounded off Doom 2's story brilliantly. 
Number 6. Eddie – Raging Justice Released in May 2015, straight out of May 1990-something, Raging Justice focused on a group of do-gooding individuals who were just keen to restore justice to their city. This Streets of Rage-like title was a solid game worth picking up, but it too unfortunately fell victim to this egregious trope. Now, the game relies on this notion throughout, but it's Eddie, the colossal brute from the junkyard level, who catches your eye. The globular beast requires a ton of damage to be beaten, dropping only a single smidge of health with each blow. Coupled with the arrival of his cronies and the infrequent dropping of steel on your head, it's an excruciatingly tough level to pass that establishes Eddie as a pretty formidable boss. The same cannot be said though when Eddie returns later, as in the circus theme level, he's now a one-shot kill, eradicating the sinister presence that he once oozed. And there was no explanation for this either. He didn't come into the level with a reduced health bar, nor did he lack any of his original abilities. Given his bulbous appearance, it wouldn't have been a stretch for Eddie to remain one of the staunchest bosses in the game, but here we are. Number 5. Lizalfos, The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. The Legend of Zelda is a franchise infamous for relying upon the same enemies throughout a single release. In Ocarina of Time, it's the Lizalfus' turn. Debuting in The Adventures of Link, the reptilian warriors are tasked with slaying Link, and they pretty much prove unsuccessful. But when they reappear in Ocarina of Time, they've been promoted to mini-boss status, and are now more agile and brandished swords, coming with more of an aggressive aura that should make Link and the player fight more cautiously. Battling in Dodongo's caverns in pairs of two, the Lizalfos tactically switch roles when one takes sufficient damage damage, meaning that Link isn't fighting all of them at once, but crucially means that fighting them is more time-consuming than others. Well, at least the first time anyway. When they return in the Spirit Temple to fight adult Link, the Dezalfos have been demoted back to regular enemies, and can be taken out in just two hits if Link opts for the bigger Ron sword. Their authoritarian presence is completely evaporated, which makes sense because adult Link is stronger than child Link, but it's still a nefarious error of judgement from Nintendo. Number 4. El Gigante – Resident Evil 4 El Gigante, a creature with a more imposing stature than the ill-fated WWE Herculean giant Gonzalez, was introduced in Resident Evil 4 as an outrageously forceful mutated giant. When Leon first encounters him, El Gigante can be beaten by saving a dog from a bear trap earlier on. Although Gigante is an all-powerful brute, his lack of basic intelligence means that he's constantly distracted by the rather charming pup, allowing Leon to duck out of harm's way on the regular and shoot him right in the face. Facing two of these brutes at once, one being normal El Gigante and the other being a grazed type, in Chapter 4, Leon will find that El Gigantes, plural, have now become well, a bit of pushover. With enough ammunition to handle more than one at a time, the player will fly through this meeting with ease, particularly when you factor in having the ability to lure them over to a trap door that causes one of them to be eliminated immediately. But be careful here though, as straying too close to the lava pit as you knock one in will see El Gigante grab Leon's foot, dragging him to his death alongside. Number 3. The Tripod – Dead Space 2 Dead Space 2 is known for a lot of things. It's an objectively well put together survival horror that continues the journey of Isaac Clarke following Dead Space Ignition, and you encounter a plethora of challenging foes throughout. And the tripod is definitely one of the most tenacious. First introduced at the crux of Chapter 1, the stealthy long armed necromorph is nearly invincible. Able to repel a significant amount of damage, Isaac will take a few minutes before he's able to logistically conquer this brute, given the enemy's elongated limbs can grab you from virtually anywhere. Shooting tri Pod's arms is a proven method, but even then, it's an arduous task to come out on top the first time around. Still, this is part of what makes fighting this thing fun. Well, that and the fact it's a game of strategy. You must stay on the move, or you will die. Further on, though, Isaac is able to thwart multiple tripods at once, with one even trying to run away. These tripods are statistically no less robust than the original, fighting with the same abilities and with the same protruding wingspan, but they just don't go as hard. Isaac hasn't exactly grown in power, so why exactly this fight was much easier is kind of a mystery. Number 2. Basilisks – Dark Souls now, Dark Souls is enamoured with the concept of returning bosses. Now, few in the later titles are actually freshly created creatures, instead being direct copies of previous characters or slight variations. Now, this can be fine, but then you see the Basilisks. One of the franchise's most infuriating enemies, the googly-eyed creatures have appeared in every Dark Souls game to date, and have caused the majority of stress-related incidents for many players. At first, they ambush you in groups, obscuring your vision with a thick cloud of smoke that depletes your health bar so fast that the words you died 
appeared almost immediately. But later on though, well, make yourself a nice hot cup of tea, put your feet up, binge watch that Netflix show that you've been putting off and come back later on because your character will still be standing because they become absolutely useless. Basilisk's standard non-smoke attacks do very little damage and can be killed quite easily, but this only makes them more infuriating. Why have these gluttonous frogs be able to kill you with one spray of smoke when they're able to be one hit killed themselves later on? Make it make sense, FromSoft. And number one, various, Elden Ring. Elden Ring loves a good reuse boss, kind of like we're reusing from software from the previous entry. Though these models may at first have traditional health bars across the screen and a unique battle arena, you'll soon be doing a double take as they spawn in as common enemies, now being nowhere near as strong. Take the pumpkin heads for example. The boss version, the Mad Pumpkin Heads, yields an impressive level of strength with assorted weapons, and although they're optional bosses, they're still worth a gander for the sake of defeating them. As a common enemy though, well they're known as Lesser Mad Pumpkin Heads, and a far are less strong than their mad counterparts, though they are able to summon spirits for aid. Other common examples of this trope include the Stone Digger Trolls, the Guardian Golems, and the Scaly Misbegotten. The reusing of so many enemies wouldn't be an issue if it weren't for their constant presence. Having the bulk of common enemies be the variants of past bosses and other enemies strips them of their uniqueness that otherwise would have presented them in the best possible light. And you know what, fighting the same models gets pretty tiring after over 100 hours, let me tell you. And there we go, my friends. Those were 10 video games that reused enemies and made them worse. I hope you enjoyed that, and please let me know what you thought about it down in the comment section below. As always, I've been Jules. You can go follow me over on Twitter, Instagram, where it's at RetroJ, but the O is a zero. But before I go, I just want to say one thing. Hope you're treating yourself well, my friend, with love and respect, because I just want the best for you. I want you to treat yourself well, because you deserve all the good things in life, like love, happiness, and success. And do not let anything or anyone else tell you otherwise. You are a massive ledge, all right? Now go out there and smash it. As always, I've been Jules, you have been awesome, never forget that, and I'll speak to you soon. Bye.